Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. This is lesson number 2 from financial information topic. In the first lesson, you learned about why business needs finance and internal sources of finance. In this lesson, you will learn about external sources of finance and its types. Then we will move on to alternative sources of capital and factors influencing the choice of finance. Let's have a look at the learning intentions for this session. External source of finance, short term and long term with examples. Importance of alternative sources of capital. Main factors to consider when making financial choice. Then let's move on to success criteria. Once the session is complete, you should be able to define external sources of finance and classify the types. Differentiate short term and long term sources of finance with examples. Describe the importance of alternate sources of capital. List the factors that influence the financial choice. Let's start with the main lesson, external sources of finance. This is capital which is raised from outside the business. Businesses can obtain external sources of finance from or by selling shares, bank overdraft, bank loan, government grants to name a few examples. External sources of finance can be divided into two types, short term finance and long term finance. Short term finance. Businesses sometimes need to borrow finance for a short period of time. If the finance is needed for less than one year, it is classified as short term. The main sources of short term finance are overdraft, trade credit and debt factoring. Let's look short term finance in detail. We will start with bank overdraft. Most businesses will have an overdraft agreement with their bank. This allows them to withdraw a sum of money from their account which is greater than the balance in their account. This is very flexible source of finance because businesses are able to change the amount of borrowing at short notice depending on their needs. However, the cost of this type of borrowing is often higher than most other sources of borrowing. For this reason, overdrafts are usually used only to meet short term cash shortages. Next, we will move on to trade credit. Businesses usually buy most of their resources such as raw materials and components from their suppliers on credit. Trade credit is a source of finance as the supplier is lending money for the cost of goods for the length of agreed credit period. If the business can negotiate long credit terms with supplier, it will increase short term finance. For example, if a business can buy 500,000 of raw material from its suppliers on credit terms of 40 days instead of 30 days, then this means that business has 500,000 available for an extra 10 days. Another way of using trade credit to provide short term finance is to delay the payment to the supplier. For example, instead of negotiating with the supplier to increase the credit period from 30 days to 40 days, the customer simply takes longer to pay. However, there is limitations in this. Any discount offered by the supplier for prompt on early payment will be lost. The supplier may refuse further 
deliveries to the business until the outstanding payment has been made. If delayed payment occurs too often, then the supplier may demand payment before delivery. Next is debt factoring. Most businesses in retail sector insist on cash payment for any sales. Most other businesses usually sell their goods to customers on credit terms. These customers become a debtor to the business and are shown in the statement of financial position as trade receivables. The longer the period of time a business gives its customers to pay, the greater the amount of finance it will need to find from other sources to be able to meet day-to-day -day expenses and other short-term debts. One solution for this problem is to sell the debts to a debt factoring company. The debt factoring company buys the debt for a discounted amount. This provides business with immediate cash. The debt factoring company gains a profit as it will receive the full payment from the customer. As we all know the types of short term finances, here is a brief of why a short term finance are needed for any business. Short term finances are crucial for any business where it is required to manage the day-to-day -day expenses or working capital requirements. This is due to some situations like uneven flow of cash and some seasonal changes where the cash flow will be affected and it can be managed through short-term loans. Short-term loans usually funded by financial institutions and banks where the borrower needs to repay the loan with small payments or they will be paying the full amount at end of the period and the period negotiation is between the bank and the borrower. The explanations for short term finance is done. Now let's move on to long term finance. Any source of finance which is required for more than one year is classified as long term. The main sources of long term finance are bank loan, higher purchase, leasing, mortgage, debenture and share issue. And that's the introduction on long term sources. Let's look these sources in detail. Bank loan. This is a sum of money obtained from a bank which must be repaid and on which interest is payable. These are usually quick to arrange but every business has to go through the rules and regulations laid by the bank. Large companies are often offered low rates of interest by banks if they borrow large sums. But small businesses often find it more difficult to obtain bank loans as they are seen as a great risk by the banks. However, a bank loan have to be repaid eventually and interest must be paid. Security of collateral is usually required. This means the bank may insist that it has the right to sell some of the business property if it fails to pay interest or does not repay the loan. A sole trader may have to put his or her own house up as a security on a bank loan. The next long term finance we will see is higher purchase. As you see on the slide, pictorial representation of a higher purchase process has been shown, which involves hirer, a dealer, and a banker or a financier. Higher purchase 
is most often used to finance non-current assets such as motor vehicles and machinery. Businesses will own the asset once all payments have been made and it is responsible for any maintenance or repairs to the asset. This allows a business to buy a fixed asset over a long period of time with monthly payments which include an interest charge. Businesses does not have to find a large cash to purchase the asset. However, a cash deposit is paid at start of the higher purchase period. Interest payments can be quite high. The next option is leasing. As you see on the slide, there are three parties involved in a leasing process, which is a customer, a leasing company and a dealer. The picture explains how a leasing process is done. Leasing is most often used as a source of finance for non-current assets in particular motor vehicles and machinery. In return for having use of the asset, the business pays the leasing company a fixed amount over a set period of time. This payment is usually paid monthly or quarterly. The asset is not owned by the business and at end of the lease term, it can give the asset back to the leasing company. The leasing company is usually responsible for the maintenance and repair of the asset. And the next source is mortgage. A mortgage is similar to a bank loan but is used specifically for a purchase of land or building. Interest is charged on the amount borrowed and this must be paid each year. By the end of the mortgage term, the amount borrowed must be completely repaid. The next long term finance is debentures. Debenture is a debt instrument used by large companies to borrow money at a fixed rate of interest. A debenture is like a certificate of loan or a loan bond evidencing the fact that company is liable to pay a specified amount with interest. It is usual for a business to provide security against the value of the debenture so that the debenture holder is guaranteed to get their money back even if the business is unable to repay it themselves. For example, a business may provide the debenture holder with the legal right to sell some of its land or building if it fails to repay the amount borrowed. Now let's move on to the last source under long term finance, issue of share or selling of shares. This source of finance is only possible for limited companies. This is a permanent source of capital which would not have to be repaid to shareholders. No interest has to be paid. However, dividends are paid after tax whereas interest on loans is paid before tax is detected. The ownership of the company could change hands if many shares are sold. And this option is available only to limited companies which can raise capital by selling shares and only public limited companies can offer shares for sale to the public. As we all know about the types of long term sources of finance, here is a brief why long term sources of finance is needed for any business. These long term sources of finance usually used to purchase any fixed or non-current assets and these types of finance majorly used for any establishing new 
thing or expanding the existing thing for the business and this could also be used for technological innovation in the business and research and development the next is government grants the governments of many countries support businesses in their country by providing grants and other financial assistance to encourage new business startups or to assist business growth and development in maldives also subsidies are available for small and medium enterprises which especially can be developed in atoll areas next is alternative source of capital which has two options that is microfinance and crowd funding let's have a look at microfinance in many low income developing countries traditional commercial banks have been very unwilling to lend to poor people even if they wanted the finance to set up an enterprise banks did not lend because the size of the loan required by poor customers perhaps a few dollars means that bank could not make a profit from the loans the poorer groups in society often have no assets to act as security for loans banks are usually not prepared to take the risk by lending without some form of security specialist institutions have been set up in most developing countries to meet the financial needs of poor people especially poor entrepreneurs the most famous of these is the gramin bank of bangladesh thanks to the vision of people like professor mohammad yunus founder and managing director of gramin bank microfinance is now available to people wishing to start a business but who are unable to obtain finance from any other source the loans are often small amounts and are typically repaid within 6 months to a year once the loan has been repaid it then becomes available to other borrowers and the another alternative source of capital is crowd funding entrepreneurs publish their idea for a project on internet or through social media networks they say how much finance they need what they will do with the capital raised and how an investor might benefit in the future they invite anyone who is interested to invest in their business idea often the finance is raised from the large number of people each investing a small amount of money and now we are here at the last part of our lesson factors influencing the choice of finance we now know the main sources of finance available to firms what factors do managers consider before deciding where to obtain finance from there are four factors that influence the choice of finance size and legal form of the business amount needed length of time and existing borrowing size and legal form companies especially public limited companies have a greater choice of source of finance issuing shares of debentures is not an option for sole trader and partnerships these businesses if they have plans to expand may have to depend on the savings of their owners personal capital they also often have the disadvantage of having to pay higher interest rates to banks for loans than large and well established companies amount needed different sources will be used depending on the amount of money needed a company would not go to the expense of arranging a new share issue if only 5000 dollar of capital was needed for a short time period length of time what is the finance to be spent on 
is it to be used to pay for fixed asset or is it needed to pay for a short term cash flow crisis the general rule is to match the source of finance to use that will be made of it if the use is long term for example the purchase of a fixed asset the source should be long term if the use is short term for example the purpose of additional inventories to cover a busy period the source should be short term existing borrowing if a business already has existing borrowing then it might find it more difficult to borrow further amounts from banks and other lenders this is because it will be seen as a greater risk and here is the summary for the lesson in this lesson we learned about what is external source of finance and its types short term and long term under short term we had three sources which is bank overdraft trade credit and debt factoring and under long term we came across six options that is bank loan higher purchase leasing mortgage debenture and share issue next we moved on to alternative sources of capital which has two option that is microfinance and crowd funding finally we saw the factors that influence the choice of finance and the factors are size and legal forms of business amount required length of time existing borrowing based on these factors only the owners or the managers will decide which type of finance is needed for the business and which will give best benefit for them and that's all for the day about external sources of finance hope you enjoyed the lesson and i hope to see you again with another lesson thank you